It's just quite the mystery, isn't it? Yeah, this is a mystery that's absolutely been captivating the country. Uh, High-flying millionaire Melissa Caddick disappeared without a trace on November 12, and for over two months she hasn't been seen or heard from. 49-year-old mother Melissa Caddick lived a life of luxury. A $7 million Sydney mansion, a $300,000 car, a necklace worth an eye-watering quarter of a million dollars, gorgeous gowns, fancy holidays, whatever her heart desired. But on November 12 last year, the businesswoman walked out of her Dover Heights home for a run and vanished, leaving behind her phone, wallet and keys. We are treating the case as she still is alive and we're still actively looking for CCTV, downloading uh, information from her car's computers. Just two days earlier, the Australian Federal Police raided the financial advisor's home after the Australian Security Investment Commission launched an investigation into allegations her firm was operating without a licence. Was Ms Caddick conducting large-scale superannuation fraud? Had she fleeced hundreds of trusting investors out of millions of dollars? And how was she funding her extraordinarily opulent lifestyle? Her investors want answers. Her family just want her home. There are potentially hundreds and hundreds of victims out there and, and of course her family members that, that want answers. All right, and for more on this, we are joined by former Queensland Police Detective Inspector and Criminologist Dr Terry Goldsworthy on the Gold Coast. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. I mean, it's 2021, we've got computer, phone records, CCTV. How difficult is it to just disappear these days? Yeah, morning, Alison. Look, it's very difficult to uh, get yourself divested of your technological footprint. Uh, the digital world now encompasses everything we do. If you look at your phone, your home, your car, everything has some kind of digital footprint. So, you know, it may be an active footprint like texting, phone calls, etc., or it may be a passive footprint, something that you don't actually realise you're leaving there, such as, you know, search engine records and your IP address, the GPS in your car, you know, the GPS in a smartwatch. Uh, all those things are leaving your footprint uh, in the virtual world, and all of those things can assist police in their investigations. I mean, it's, it is very difficult still to, to disappear, mm. um, given CCTV, given, uh, as you're saying, the digital footprint that we have, and see them being very well thought out, all this foul play. What are some of the most likely theories police are what we're working on right now? Yeah, I think there's three main theories, Carl, and they would be that uh, she's come to some uh, foul play, that being a murder or kidnapping, etc. Uh, the second one would be some kind of self-harm. And the third one would be that she's a missing person uh, and a person of interest who's uh, on the run trying to avoid being questioned by the police. So certainly uh, I think the third one is the, uh, the issue that the police seem to be putting forward. They seem fair, very confident that she's still alive and at this stage aren't too focused on the first two options. So um, in regards to her suddenly disappearing, yeah, you're right, it's, it's very difficult to go uh, and get rid of all those kind of digital footprints. You basically have to go to a cash economy. It requires some kind of planning. Uh, there were uh, allegations that large amounts of money had been taken out of the business accounts prior to her disappearing. So it would take a fair bit of preparation to actually disappear and not leave those digital footprints. Which would suggest, if that's the case, that she'd been planning this for some time. What's your theory on it? Do you think, do you agree with the police? Do you reckon she is alive? Oh, look, I think so. I don't think uh, you would see the Commissioner of New South Wales Police come out and get involved in an investigation like this if he uh, didn't have good information that she's still alive. So what happens when you have an investigation like this? You try to move from a low information state to a high information state. And you'll do that by interviewing associates, looking for the digital footprint, seeing what has gone on around prior to that person disappearing. So uh, he'd be appealing. The media itself is a strategy the police would be using to increase their information and uh, try and pin down where she is. So, I mean, like CCTV, you mentioned before, there's some mention in the media she may have come to Queensland. On the Gold Coast alone, we have over 500 council-run CCTV cameras, so it's very difficult to go and hide. It's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, her case is before the court as well. What happens with that now? Yeah, look, ASIC has taken some uh, action in the courts. There's been uh, liquidators and receivers appointed. So I don't think there'll be any rush on the part of ASIC to uh, take any further action. 
Uh, I think I'll be sitting back and watching to see uh, what happens with her case. And of course, in the time of COVID, she's actually assisted in laying low because, you know, we can all wear masks now and no one thinks anything of it. She can go into isolation and not leave a hotel room. And again, no one may think anything of that. So it'll be a bit more difficult, I think, for the police, given the circumstances we're currently in. You know, co uh, cops generally have a, a really good gut feel about these sort of things. What's your gut tell you? Oh, I think uh, the fact she's gone uh, missing the day after the raid, that none of her uh, electronic devices were taken. There's some uh, suggestion in the media that she had an injury and couldn't actually run. So uh, my money's with the commissioner in this one. I think she's uh, alive and at some stage we'll see uh, the police locating her. Well, there's been, certainly been uh, reported sightings of her around the country, but nothing's come of that as yet. Um, it's a fascinating one. We do watch this one. I think, mm. as you say, how anyone could disappear in this t um, age, we have no idea. But thank you for that, Terry, and don't miss the 60 Minutes investigation into Melissa Caddick this Sunday at 8.45pm, which is right here on 9. That's a great insight. Looking forward to that.